Hi, I'm Robin Trimingham, and I'm here with Bill Story, the founder of Olderhood.com. You are listening to Radio Olderhood, a Retirement Happiness, a continuing series. So, Bill, I'm not going to ask you what's on your mind today, because I'm actually the one who's got something on my mind. Well, I will say hello. Can I, I'll, I'll say hello first and just say... Well, I guess we'll allow you. that. Yeah, I'll allow that. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> so, believe it or not, I was driving through town today... Um, running some errands and I was on the front street of Hamilton, Bermuda and there were a bunch of school children on either side of the road and there must have been two dozen of them in total and they had uh, small white uh, cardboard signs with something written on them and they were jumping up and down and everybody was driving by and paying absolutely no attention to them and I happened to look at what was on the sign and I kid you not it said Honk if you're happy. Honk if you're happy. Honk if you're happy. So I <laughs> like, I started furiously honking my honk, horn. Honk, honk. They're all cheering and going, yay, she gets it, she gets it. And everybody else was just coming and going, huh? Really? Really. They were, so they were all driving past. Uh, either that or none of them are happy. Well, maybe, well of course, that's what it is. Yeah. But, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, what people think when they see a stimulus like that. You know, when they read a sign and they go, oh, this is just silly kids. But why did the kids do it in the first place? Well, it was some kind of youth group thing, activity. Right, right. And I don't know whether it was supposed to be, uh, you know, a research project or whether it was about team spirit. I, I didn't exactly pull over the car and ask. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it, it was pretty interesting because at, way after I had gone by them, I heard one guy on a, a bike Honking his little bike horn. Yep. <laughs> yes, yeah. of somebody else finding. Well, I think it's, but isn't it the same kind of thing that if you walk into a, a, a shop or a store or someplace like that, and if you just walk in and if the first thing you say, say is, Hi, how are you today? Then the, the, the shop person, you know, kind of treats you differently. I think if you walk in and sort of say, Yeah, well, I need a packet of this and I want two of those and five of those. I think everybody goes, well, okay, there you go, everybody. And nobody's happy. Whereas I think if you start off by saying, hey, I'm quite happy. How are you today? Are you happy? Then people kind of respond to that. Well, you're making a good point because there's absolutely no doubt that you're, you know, the uh, attitude that you carry with you, the aura that, that's about you, the intonation in your voice, that affects everybody around you. And I think, you know, people have really kind of forgotten that. We're all in such a big old hurry these days and they're always like, oh my God, I don't want to see her. Or, oh no, it's him. You know, that they really forget that just stop and say, hey. How are you doing today? Well, I think well, I remember well, quite a number of years ago. I was going, I was flying back to Bermuda. Uh, I was I was coming out of Edinburgh in Scotland, and I was flying Edinburgh down to London, London, Bermuda. And I, and I was a bit late when I got to Edinburgh Airport to the check-in gate. And you know, once you go through security, which takes ages, um, the the door of the plane, the plane was still there, but the door of the plane was about shut. I think. Yeah. And I thought, I, I've really messed this up because I'm going to miss my connection. So I thought, well, I could be aggressive and I could sort of say, hey, wait a minute, I need to go on that plane. Or I could do the happy stuff. And the BA, stu- you know, stewardesses that were there at the gate, I, I, I said, I, I look, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I goofed, it's my fault, but I really, come on, would you help me out here? And you know, that happier attitude that I wasn't going to hassle them. They knew that I was aiming for that plane. They knew that. But I wasn't going to hassle them. I wasn't going to, you know, fight with them or argue or anything like that. I wasn't going to get uptight. I just took a very kind of, oh, what a fool I am kind of thing. And you know what? They took sympathy and they said, I think you'll be okay, sir. No problem. Well, they must have been yeah. ranger supporters. Well, there must have been something like that, I suppose, you know. But they were getting, and, and the kind of door opened back up again and everybody... No, nobody seemed to care, and, um, and and funny enough, I got on the plane, and the and the person I sat beside uh, was a guy that I went to university with, who I had not seen for about thirty years, and he was actually a member of parliament, uh, maybe still is, I don't know, in Westminster, 
and we chatted the whole way down to London for about an hour, an hour and a half. And it was fantastic. And I thought, now, had I not been happy, I may not have got on this plane, I would not have met this guy. Um, I knew his wife, actually, as well, because she was in my class at university. So, so it was a great day, and it started off. Do happy. you know what I read once? Uh, I wish I could remember which author said this. But somebody who was into a lot of spiritualism and is talking a lot about, you know, the purpose of your soul and why we're all here, says that we have a connection to every person that we encounter in our lifetime. And they use the example of airplanes specifically. They say that every single time that you sit in a seat on an airplane, you have some kind of ongoing spiritual connection to the person in the seat beside you and it is an opportunity to reconnect and you know you there are some people who are really blabby and chatty on planes and they'll talk to anybody but the re most of the rest of us just sit there you know especially now that they show movies on planes and oh, we're all wearing earbuds and nobody talks to each other and they say that we're missing these opportunities to make these huge life-changing connections on an airplane. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I suppose I could. I suppose I could believe that. I, I'm kind of one of those people. I don't really talk to people um, on, on planes. Um, it's just, I, and I never have. You know, I mean, it's not because I'm getting older, I'm getting grumpier. It's just because I never really have. But I mean, this, that that particular guy was, you know, he was he was a kind of VIP kind of guy. I mean, and, mm -hmm. but I, you know. Uh, and we had a great chat, and we circled over. Um, I think we were flying into Heathrow or Gatwick, I can't remember. We circled over London, the London airport for about an extra half hour. So I had about an hour and a half with this guy, and um, I mean, it, it was fun, you know. So, But it all started because I was happy. I mean, the stewardess could have said, oh, I'm sorry, the gate is closed, that's it, goodbye. But no, I'm So okay. that's the message for this week. Get out of bed in the morning, be happy, and see if your day and turns out people, differently. Yeah, tell yeah. people, me, me, try and make other people happy because by happiness from you. Hi, how are you doing? You okay today? Oh, cool. Yeah, and people respond. Sounds good. I think that's a good place to stop. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com, olderhood.com. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye -bye.